Welcome to the immediate reaction show for UFC Vegas 88. If you guys have been joining me for the past couple of weeks, you guys know that the show is pretty much me giving my immediate reactions and takes to every single UFC matchup as it completes. I will be stitching all of it together after the last fight completes and then putting it out for you guys ASAP so you guys can get my raw, unfiltered, and quick thoughts on every single matchup. Not to mention all the odds that ended up cashing so you can see which juicy numbers were able to hit. And uh, curious to see if you were one of them that ended up hitting those spots as well now just a quick heads up there is a ton of mma going on right now uh ksw 92 is currently on as well as cage warriors 168 and then obviously ufc vegas 88 is mere minutes away from kicking off so i'm just throwing it out there that the first several ufc uh fights that i'll be uh covering here giving my immediate reactions for will likely just be the pictures slash graphics uh if i were to try to um add the video portion to it as well it would just be laggy it would be disgusting with all the mma that i got going on my laptop right now but hopefully for the last handful of main card fights when it's just the ufc fights that are on i should be able to get the video back on that's just for anybody watching on the youtube so uh taking the pretty face you might not see it for more than a half of the episode here but appreciate the love and support regardless now let's get right into the action it was a slow first round for Chad and Heller but he was able to pick it up in the second and third rounds with solid takedown defense and then letting go with the striking advantage, absolutely battering the lead leg of Haralampos, Gregorio, and it was ultimately a unanimous decision victory that we saw and Heller achieve. That was a big win for him, especially coming off the last loss that he had and showcasing that he still has something to give in the UFC, especially when they feed him guys of the level of Gregorio. In my opinion, Gregorio is a guy that, you know, you got a quick finish on the contender series, but that never really tells us how skilled a fighter will really be once they make it to the UFC. But Angeliger put that veteran uh, style on him, put some good punches on him, almost got him out of there a couple times, but credit to Gregorio for sticking out the entire time and seeing the scorecards but ultimately it was chad and helliger who got the better of him let's check out the odds that cast here as and helliger money line comes through as the underdog to kick off the night at plus 150 by decision was plus 400 and the over two and a half cashes at even money good win for and helliger solid fight to kick off the night let's see how the rest of it goes down Stellar performance from Tiago Moises, who dispatches of short notice replacement Mitch Ramirez via leg kicks. Now, at the ending of the first round, we saw Moises actually get the back of Ramirez, and it looked like he had a very deep rear naked choke set in, but Ramirez showcased good resiliency and good submission defense to work out of that. Ultimately, it was his calf that was unable to take the amount of damage that Moises was dishing out to it. It only took 15 seconds into the third round for Moises to touch it a few more times before Ramirez fell writhing in pain. Great work from Tiago Moises, who was originally scheduled to fight Brad Riddell, which would have been a great fight fight and probably one that would have found itself on the main card as well but Moises made himself be known in terms of his intentions after the fight let's quickly talk about the odds that cast and we'll talk about his post-fight interview odds that cast here Moises big favorite comes through at minus 335 by knockout plus 500 round three plus 750 round three by knockout plus 2600 and then the over one and a half cashes at minus 170 so Moises went on to call out not just Brad Riddell, but his team, specifically Dan Hooker, who is obviously higher ranked than Brad Riddell and has a little bit more name value too. And I think that's a great call out, especially if they want to uh, try to fill out the UFC schedule with another worthy fight night main event. Both guys are very skilled. Obviously, Moises improving his striking as we're seeing, but could potentially cause Hooker some issues in the grappling realm if the fight did end up in that space as well. But great win for Moises. I hope the UFC decides to put that together, although it feels like a lot of fighters at lightweight have been calling out Dan Hooker uh, every so often, and I think I've pretty much said that every callout has been great. So regardless, Moises definitely deserves a name in his next uh, next outing, uh, and hopefully he finds himself back on the main card, at least if, even if it's a fight night.
Boy, oh boy, must you be kicking yourself if you were backing Corey McKenna there as she goes out there and takes down Jacqueline Amarim right away and ultimately falls into an armbar to the Jiu-Jitsu Wizard. And Jacqueline Amarim is able to pick up a first round submission victory. Now, going into this matchup, I really expect McKenna to utilize her grappling defensively, trying to keep this fight upright where she could potentially have a experience and striking advantage. But she was more than happy to take this fight to the ground early and I knew from there that she was destined to get tapped and that's exactly what happened as Amrim was able to snatch that up. A little bit of a snafu in terms of the mix-up with uh, the referee Mike Beltran calling a stop to the fight. Uh, luckily, they were able to just quickly let it go and just continue the fight. No real uh, having to, you know, go to the tapes or going to a no contest or anything like that. That would be very unfair to Amrim who clearly had that submission locked up. And luckily, they were able to fight through it, and she was able to get the victory there. So good win for Amrim. That's two in a row now. Let's see if she can keep this rolling. Let's check out the odds that cashed. Amrim was the dog. That's two straight dogs now coming through. Or sorry, uh, two out of the three dogs coming through to start off the card. She casters at plus 140. Uh, by submission, plus 350. Round one, plus 550. Round one, sub, plus 650. I'm kind of bummed that I missed out on that, as that's a very juicy spot. Um, if Amram was to get the win, that would likely be how it came. And then the under two and a half caches at plus 160. Again, this was a long layoff for McKenna to come back to. She got married, all that good stuff. But um, yeah, just you got to question the game plan going into this matchup, thinking that you'd be able to really grapple with a high level jujitsu player like Amram from jump, you know, maybe closer to the second or third round where you start to wear on Amram, that's when you go to the grappling but to go to it right off the bat that's a huge question mark in my opinion but good on Amram for taking advantage of that and taking on home the first round submission victory it was a hard fought battle between these two featherweights but ultimately it was Danny Silva that was able to pull off the upset and win this fight on the scorecards <laughs> Both guys had some solid moments throughout, and it was obviously Silva who started off hot by hurting Koulibao very badly and almost getting him out of there, but ultimately Koulibao, Koulibao's durability held it tough for him. Uh, he managed to battle back in that same round, had a solid second round as well, but it seemed like Silva was really starting to take over in that third round, walking him down and hitting him with some nasty combinations. I really like what we've been seeing from Silva. It's very unfortunate that he missed weight yesterday, so hopefully that's something that he can get in check for his next matchup, but this is definitely a prospect to keep an eye on, especially with that crisp striking that we saw on display on this card. All right, let's check out the odds that cashed. Silva, the underdog, coming through once again, plus 165 by decision, plus 380, and the over two and a half cashing at minus 190. Again, Silva, is a very solid contender series prospect so we have to bring him up nice and slowly but this is a win that probably does a lot of good things for his confidence and i look forward to seeing how the ufc matches him up moving forward absolute domination from the get-go for jafel Fuyu, who took his time in terms of looking for the takedown and once he got it to the ground it wasn't that long after that he was able to establish the top control and get the back of Osborne credit to Osborne for fending off as many submission attempts as he did but as soon as Filio decided to start throwing big punches that's where the opening for the submission ended up coming and that's where Filio was able to take full advantage of that me myself I obviously had Filio straight up here so I was happy that he cashed I was hoping that Osborne would be able to make it into the second and third rounds where I had some pokes on that round two sub at plus 600 and that round three sub at plus 1000 but Osborne was unable to deal with the Brazilian jiu-jitsu brilliance of Jafel Filho. So, uh, yeah, great work for Filho. Looking forward to seeing how the UFC matches him up moving forward. Uh, let's look at the odds that cashed. Uh, Filho comes in as the favorite, minus 160 cashes on that. By submission, plus 180, one of the easier props to call this week. Round one, plus 290. Round one sub, plus 440. And the under two and a half hits with relative ease at minus 190. Once again, Fuyo is a guy that a lot of people should be keeping their eyes on in this flyweight division. Now he has two straight victories. He was close to handing Mohamed Makhayev his first ever loss in his UFC debut. This is a guy that's getting better every single time out. And considering how dangerous he is once he establishes that top control, 
I look forward to seeing how he does moving forward. It was a tough and gritty fight from both women, but ultimately it was Chelsea Chandler who did enough in the first two rounds to get her hand raised on the scorecards by decision. She showcased some tough grit, especially battling through a very bloody nose in that second and third round, but it was her ability to establish that dominant position in the second round. And I gotta say, I thought we would see a little bit more damage from her from that top position, especially when she was able to secure the full mount and even get the back of Nunez at a couple times but it seemed like she was scared to lose the position allowing Nunez to potentially get back to her feet but Chandler did enough in the first two rounds to secure that victory finally halting the momentum of Josiani Nunez who continued to go out there and pull off the unthinkable destroying or at least beating women that were much much bigger than her I'm still not the most impressed with Chandler as I believe she has a lot of holes in her game that can be exploited by the top of the division at 135 pounds but but this was a good confidence builder for her and her ability for her to go out there and showcase that she can still get the W. Let's check out the odds that cashed. Chandler comes in as the underdog, pulls out the victory at plus 115, by decision at plus 300, and the over two and a half caches at a near pick em of minus 115. Like I said, Chandler has some things to work on, but this is a start in the right direction two wins now in the ufc let's see how they match her up going forward boy is it damn good to see mike davis back inside the cage he went out there and absolutely thrashed through Nathan Levy, nearly getting the first round finish, but ultimately it was in the first two minutes of the second round that he was able to secure the finish over Levy and secure that submission victory. He came in as a heavy chalky favorite here, but a lot of people expected him to go out there and absolutely style on Levy, and that's exactly what he ended up doing. This is one of those fighters that doesn't seem to enjoy fighting, but is so damn good, but I'm glad that he's really realizing that he is as good as he is and should remain as active as he could potentially be and uh, maybe this is a fighter that could potentially see a title shot in his near future if he continues to rack up victories especially if he's able to get some finishes as well to help fast track him to this talent stack light heavyweight division or sorry lightweight division uh, again I'm a big fan of Mike Davis very glad that he went out there and did the damn thing Natan Levy looked like he was kind of lost out there had some good defensive things in the first round but ultimately was unable to do much against Davis who seemed like he wanted a point to prove with his jiu-jitsu game and I'm very happy that he did that considering that was the style I expected him to fight with tonight so let's check out the odds that cast here Davis chalky favorite at minus 490 I had him as a lock of the night play but had him earlier this week when we can get him as good as minus 290 so I'm very happy to have jumped in on that before it ballooned up to this near 5 to 1 range I also honed in on the submission prop I personally got plus 900 but the odds before the fight showed plus 800 I also targeted that round three sub but Levy was unable to make it to the third round Regardless, still happy to cash that submission prop at plus 800 and then the under two and a half caches at plus 150. Mike Davis, the beast boy, is back. Let's see if he can stick to his plan of trying to get at least two more fights out in this calendar year. Gerald Mearshart puts on a veteran performance here, taking his time, breaking down Barbarina until he was able to open up that rear naked choke to secure the submission victory in round number two. Now, Mearshart is looking to get a run going here, especially after having a roller coaster of a run over the last couple of years. But this guy is very capable of putting his opponent's lights out, especially when he's able to get them to the ground. It's usually been his speed and his inability to complete takedowns, which has kept him from getting his hand raised. But it seems like he's becoming smarter, fighting a little bit more discipline and being more tactical inside the cage. And that will definitely pay you dividends for him, especially as he continues to work his way back up the middleweight ranking. Very unfortunate loss here for Barbarena, who pretty much drilled wrestling the entire time for this camp, according to the commentators, uh, and it did not pay off for him, as Mirshad still managed to land well-timed takedowns to get Barbarena to the mat to eventually get that submission victory. Let's check out the odds that cast here. Mirshad entrenched as a solid favorite, cashes at minus 240, by submission plus 130, round 2 plus 450, round 2 by sub plus 500, and the under 2.5 cashes at minus 160. Again, good win for Gerald Mearshart. I don't know how high up he can go up the middleweight rankings, but I'd be surprised if he ends up cracking the top 10. But let's take it step by step.
It seems to be the night of the submissions as Macy Casson secures the fifth submission of the night. She does so in the first round over Penny Kianzad after showing some grappling dominance. There was some bright spots for Kianzad in terms of working out of some bad spots, getting some control time of her own, but it was ultimately Kiasan who was able to get out of those bad positions and then eventually assert her dominance, opening up the rear naked choke opportunity and taking it on home with her. Now, if this is the Kiasan that we were expecting to see when she came off the Ultimate Fighter with a ton of potential, I do believe that this version of her could be successful against the top of this division now that she seems to have her weight cut under wraps and she can actually go out there and perform to the best of her abilities i look forward to seeing what she is able to do against even the higher level of the bantamweight division and seeing if she can find herself in title talks anytime soon Let's check out the odds that cash here. Kiasan was the favorite, cashing out minus 250. By submission, plus 700. Round one, plus 850. Round one, submission, plus 1700. And then the under two and a half cashes at plus 225. Great work from Macy Casson, knowing what she needed to do to go out there and get the easy win here. It was going to come by grappling. I suspected it was going to take her the full 15 minutes to get this win, but credit to her for going out there and putting a stamp on this victory with that first round submission over Penny Kianzad. It was a very close back and forth fight, but it's ultimately Christian Rodriguez who gets his hand raised by split decision. It was a hellacious one. We knew Dalgarian was going to come on strong early. He was able to have some solid success in round two, but as most sus suspected, his round three cardio was going to start to dwindle. And I don't care, as many people were saying that, oh, this guy trains at elevation, or his you know his cardio should be fine. No matter if you train at elevation or not, the way that you, f if you fight the way Dalgarian fights, you're not going to have gas in the th in the third round uh, or even near the ending of the second round. He's all gas, no breaks, and all wrestling, just looking to control, looking to squeeze, looking to assert dominant position, and that exerts a lot of energy. Normally, guys that have that cardio to go 15 or 25 minutes can mix in the striking, mix in the grappling, and have moments that they can rest. But Rodriguez did a great job in terms of making sure there weren't many spots that Dolgarian could rest so that he can take advantage of him later on in that matchup. Let's quickly look at these scorecards here. So Sal Diamato had Christian Rodriguez win that fight um, by winning the second round. 10-9, uh, winning the third round, 10-8. Dalgarian also got a 10-8 in the first round from uh, from Sal Diamato. Anthony Maness had a 10-8 round one. Well, let's just go like this. All three judges had 10-8 round one for Dalgarian. Hard to argue against that. Uh Ron McCarthy and Sal Diamato scored round two in favor of Christian Rodriguez, and I believe a lot of that had to do with the fact that we saw some uh, actual striking and some good damage that Rodriguez was landing even while looking to defend. I'm going to quickly pull up the UFC stats here to see if they actually have the numbers up or not so that we can actually look at them. So significant strikes uh, 48 to 22 in favor of Rodriguez 97 to 56 in terms of total significant strikes but specifically round two Rodriguez outstruck uh, Dalgarian by four significant strikes uh, and uh, three total strikes um, Dalgarian had four minutes of control time that round and then obviously round three we know is definitely in favor of Rodriguez. So it's weird that you get a 10 8 in the first round and 10 8 in the uh, third round, uh, the opposite ways. Uh, obviously, Rodriguez is getting the 10 8 in the third round, uh, but it came down to round two and it seemed like the the damage that Rodriguez was landing, which also was minimal, right? It wasn't a whole lot of damage. There was that big knee that he landed at a certain point and then a couple of hammer fists here and there. But we saw Dalgarian have about four minutes and 10 seconds of control time there. So it's good that they were looking at the damage over control, but there's an argument that could have made been made for either side considering the lack of output from either guy there. I wouldn't have been mad if Dalgarian got the decision there, but I do think that Rodriguez was the one that was more intense on looking for strikes and looking to land damage so good win for uh, Rodriguez there I'm obviously you know I'm a big Rodriguez believer a lot of people were shitting on me for you know taking him so confidently this week uh, officially speaking I had three units at I believe it was plus 150 or plus 160 as my dog of the night play so that comes through emphatically here but also I put him as the Lockheed Trinity spot in the uh, free parlay that I dropped for you guys so we cast a near plus 350 plus 360 um 
three legger for you guys as the lucky trinity this week so very happy a lot rode on christian rodriguez this weekend and i'm glad that it paid off for us let's quickly look at the odds that cash rodriguez money line closed at plus 160 by decision plus 400 and then the over two and a half caches at minus 110 this will be a big learning experience for isaac dolgarian who is still one of the top featherweights in the division i don't know if there are many featherweights that i could keep up with his level of scrambling and his level of control Rodriguez is one of the best in terms of creating scrambles and keeping guys uncomfortable in terms of even if they have the top position he does such a great job in terms of working out of bad positions and there was that very close arm triangle choke attempt that Dalgarian had but it didn't even seem like Rodriguez was phased at all like he wasn't trying to regain the half guard he knew that his shoulder was out enough that he could still breathe high level stuff there from uh, Christian Rodriguez but this won't drop Dalgarian down too far there might be people looking to fade him going forward here but I think that you can still go out there and have more first round dominant performances even against some of these guys in the top 10 to 15 range of the featherweight division so let's hope for some you know serious pendulum swing the other way uh, against Dalgarian so that we can possibly get him at a good line going into his next fight but regardless it is Christian Rodriguez who ends up coming out on top landing the bigger damage in the second and third rounds and getting this fight by split decision I'm going to be completely honest with you guys that I wasn't paying the closest of attention to this fight between Ovin St. Pru and Kennedy and Zetchuku as well. It was one of the actually probably the second fight that I was least looking forward to on this entire card assuming Nzechukwu was going to go out there and win that first round or at least finish uh, St. Pru in the first round but ultimately the veteran St. Pru goes out there and springs a massive upset and wins this fight on the scorecards by split decision I'll be honest the first fight first round I wasn't really paying attention because I was looking around and seeing what people were saying about the Dolgarian and Rodriguez um, scorecards a lot of people up in arms saying that Dolgarian and 100% deserve to win that second round again it may look like that on paper just due to um the control time that Dolgarian was having in that round but there wasn't much damage being sought uh from him uh but Rodriguez again I think the biggest strike of that entire round was that beautiful knee he landed up the middle and that was the closest thing to a fight ending type of technique that was landed effectively um but again we're talking about St. Pruy and and Zechuku here um a crazy third round very sloppy third round clearly both guys were gassed they're uh, boxing in a phone booth pretty much the entire time landing big shots uh, landing sloppy shots but again ultimately it's same Prude who ends up getting his hand raised by uh, decision here again another reminder why it's very tough to tr trust uh, a, a fighter like Kenny and Zedjugu at such heavy chalk um you know, I picked him to win, but there was no way I was going to get in on any action on him here, knowing that St. Pru was capable of pulling off a veteran performance. But I really thought those veteran performances for St. Pru were a thing of the past. You know, all of his fights of recent have shown him slowing down, not really looking the greatest, but he comes back and puts on a pretty solid enough performance to go out there and stop a young gun like Kennedy and Zechuku, or at least beat him on the scorecards here. All right, let's check out the odds that cash. St. Pru, money line plus 490. Drop a comment below if you were one of the few people that probably hit that line there. By decision as well, plus 1,200. Absolutely insane there. Not a lot of people expected this fight to go to the scorecards. And then the over one and a half caches at plus 130. Apparently, St. Pru wants a bunch more fights, so he's not slowing down at all. I believe this was his 25th walk to the octagon. Looks like he wants to go for 30, 35, maybe even 40. Let's see how many more we can get out of him. But regardless, he reigns supreme tonight with a split decision victory over Kennedy and Zechuku. Quite an unfortunate end to the UFC Vegas 88 co-main event as Ange Lusa and Brian Battle fight to a no contest. Due to an accidental eye poke from Brian Battle, it seemed like his thumb or the inside of his thumb just grazed the eye of Lusa midway through the second round. But to me, it honestly looked like Lusa was looking for a way out. Lusa was not having any success in that fight as Battle was dictating the range, dictating the pace, and even had some good moments from that top position against Lusa. And Lusa was unable to land anything of substance which allowed battle to really get into his groove and really start to run away with this fight it's unfortunate that battle is unable to go home with a win purse now knowing that this fight went to a no contest but it's very unfortunate like you knew as soon as lusa started poking like touching his eye and saying that he needed time 
he was looking for a way out. It's it's obvious, and I, you know, I hate to say that about a fighter. A fighter is, uh, you know, you, they these guys are actual fighters. They go out there and they try to get the job done. But it seemed like Luso was very demoralized in that matchup and didn't feel like he had the uh, the chops to go out there and muster up much of a comeback. So uh, I think the aggression from battle afterwards was warranted uh, obviously he was very pissed off they had a little bit of a scuffle in the cage um right before the decision was uh, read or right after the decision was read but luckily the security and everybody was able to get in there before things got too ugly um but yeah very very unfortunate obviously no odds that cashed if you had any bets on this fight they all should be voided due to the no contest nature of it but great work from brian battle right let's give some credit to battle um looking like his middleweight self maybe even better now and that will definitely help me cap him moving going forward um yeah great work from brian battle very unfortunate that he doesn't get a w uh in that column due to this no contest we knew it was going to be tough for marcin taboro to close that distance against the hard hitting style of tai tuivasa but he was successful in doing so he stuck with the game plan he got the perfect entry that he needed got his hands clasped behind Tui Vasa's butt and just waited for the perfect opportunity to explode pull him out drag him to the ground get the back position and sink in the rear naked choke valiant effort from Tui Vasa in terms of trying to fight the choke and at least trying to stay out of those bad positions but we knew once the fight hit the mat things were going to go pretty south for him pretty quickly and that's exactly what happened as Taibura is able to cash the submission prop here as he goes out there and submits Tui Vasa in the last minute of the first round good win for Taibura here who was on a solid run I believe he's now eight and two over his last 10 fights the guy had a solid run his only losses in that amount of time was uh, a close decision loss to Alexander Volkov and then getting starched by uh, Tom Aspinall not too long ago but those are losses you can give up to a guy like this and know that he's still capable of being a top six to top seven heavyweight in the world and how he gets matched up moving forward is the big question and I just don't know what they'll do next with him but this is a guy that you need to keep an eye on and you know people were able to cash on him as a underdog earlier this week and he ultimately got pushed away pick him uh come fight time you got to give him the credit. He's a great all-around fighter. I believe he's a BJJ brown belt or black belt by this point in time, but he is one of the more well-rounded uh, heavyweights that we have on the roster, and he showcased it once again tonight. All right, let's check out the odds that cash. Tybura closed as a uh, pick him here at minus 110. By decision, plus 550. Round one, plus, or sorry, by submission, plus 550. Round one, plus 500. Round one, submission, plus 1,600. And then the under two and a half caches at plus 155. Great work from Tybura, like I said. In terms of Tai Tuivasa, there were a lot of uh, speculations in terms of him coming into this fight, wanting to retire after it. That's a little birdie told me that, uh, but also a lot of rumors that he was injured going into this fight. So it seemed like he just did the UFC a favor in terms of taking this main event slot, which got put together on pretty short notice. Uh, you know, not the usual three to four months that we usually see in terms of main events getting announced. So it seems like the UFC is fine to just plug in two heavyweights that are somewhat ranked somewhat somewhat recognizable and okay with that and Tabaro was able to go out there and get his hand raised here all right let's quickly put a bow on this podcast here uh in terms of methods of victory there was only one knockout on the night there were a, a, a total of six submissions a ton of submissions on the slate here uh there were five decisions including three split decisions uh favorites went five and six um there were a few uh there was obviously the no contest and then the main event was a pick so no favorite there um so underdogs actually reigned supreme tonight uh not a bad look there. Uh, performer of the night, a tough one considering the amount of submissions and dominant performances that we had. You could go with Brian Battle, who looked really, really good. But I'm going to ultimately go with Jafel Filio, who seemed to have no concerns, no um issues whatsoever dealing with the guy in Ode Osborne who's normally very dangerous early on in fights especially with the striking advantage that you would expect Osborne to have in that matchup feel you shut that down completely dragged him to the ground and then eventually submitted him at the ending of that first round I was a guy that was invested in the round two sub prop at plus 600 but still happy to go out there and cash the sub prop and feel your money line but I thought he looked one of the best or had one of the best performances on the night super dominant super uh 
uh, yeah, it's super dominant, pretty much. That's pretty much all I got to say. So, performer of the night for me is Defel Fulio. Let me know who you guys thought was the performer of the night. Let me know what tickets you guys cashed if I mentioned any of them on the podcast. Otherwise, I will see you guys on Monday for the next, I believe it's UFC Vegas 89. MMA Lockcast full card breakdown, not to mention a handful of regional shows as well. I'll see you guys then. Peace.